Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we're gonna go back, Dustin, to one of my favorite distilleries, Balvini. Oh yeah. Good old Dave Stewart. And we're gonna do the Balvini Ton 1509, batch five. I brought the folks batch four. Okay. And maybe batch three, I'm not entirely sure. And I have a couple of uh, 1401s, as you know. Yes, sir. But we're gonna take a look today at the Balvini 1509, Batch 5, 52.6% ABV. Now, I'll tell you, Dustin, this one is not my favorite vintage of the mm -hmm. 1509. Um, I am a huge fan of the Batch 4. Okay. A little oakier for that. But if any of you guys would like to see the breakdown of the casks on the Batch 9, you are one of the welcome to hit pause on this video and take a look. Stop at, shaking, Mike. Come on. At the sheet. There you go. Shaking like a leaf. So this one seems to be more spice and oak forward as opposed to delicate and sweet. It seems like that's the cast that they used a little bit more. Probably should have researched that a little bit more before I started it out. And there's the front of the tube, which shows quite a bit more sweetness than the batch four did. The batch four ended about right there. Yeah. About halfway through. <clears throat> Again, you gotta kind of love the disclosure that they put out in their bottles. Oh, for sure. I mean, there's nothing I've liked better than the um, the 2003 Pete Week in terms of bottles, mm. because they just went out of their way to disclose, and they're doing the same thing here. You know, we've talked about the uh, the 15 year the single barrel bourbon mm -hmm. finish. Mm -hmm. We're back in you know they told you the bottle date, the you know all of these single barrel series they will give you a bottling date. Um, we were fortunate enough to enjoy a little bit more, or at least you enjoyed Did a little bit more. Did they do all the 15-year cherry? I think they 15, stopped. 15-year-old cherry and the 15-year-old bourbon cask and the 12-year-old single barrel bourbon cask all have a put into the barrel date and, just, or excuse me, distilled date and then um, date that they took it out of the cask. I don't think they do it on the cherry anymore. I think they stopped. They may not have. I haven't bought a cherry one in quite a while. Yeah. Maybe a year or so, so maybe that stopped. But they also do it on the 25-year-old. Yes. So a couple of the 25-year-olds you enjoyed today were actually 28.99% oh. years old. Uh, they were 28 years and 51 and a half weeks. Nice. So they were just five days short <clears throat> of 29 years old. So a lot of times um, with the Balvenie, with the single barrels where it's a 12, 15, or 25-year-old, you will get older whiskeys. Now on the 1509, they don't exactly tell you how old the whiskeys are. Yeah. I've actually tried to email Balvini with the 1509s and say, hey, look, you know, I've, I have multiple bottles of batch three, batch four, batch, batch five. Can you tell me what these casks mean as far as age? I've got no response. Yeah. It happens. Unfortunately, Balvini is, is as we both love them, they are, they're a big distillery and they don't have to, they don't have to play our games. Don't respond to everybody. It's fine. It's okay. Yeah. I, I still am a big fan of the uh, distillery in general, whether it's Glenn Fittick or the premium band brand. Balvini. Balvini is by far one of my favorite love it. distillers. I mean, they've been, I still buy the 12 occasionally. And You know what I love about Balvini is it's not peated and they don't use um, first fill, or they don't use an abundance of sherry cast for the majority of their maturation. They use, let bourbon do its job, ex-bourbon cast do yeah. their job. And to me, that really shows off the distillery characteristic extremely well. And you know, they're very confident in their malt. And let's the way be honest, they have one of the best malts in the industry. Absolutely. Bar none. Absolutely. So let's get into this batch yes, five, 1509. So Again, cat, uh, what I believe is cast strength at uh, 52.6. It never says it's cast strength on these ones, but well, it'd be batch I believe strength. it's. Is batch strength cast strength? No, well, because batch strength is... The, all every, batch is. every barrel has different proofs. Sure. So when they blend it all together, it becomes a batch strength. How is that different from cast strength? Cast strength is there's one cast, and that's whatever came out of the cast. Fair enough. Question and answer. All right, so first thing I'll tell you this is compared to the batch three and the batch four, this is far more sherry forward. It's a far sweeter, more sherry whiskey than those other two. So I'm right away getting clear elements of bourbon and clear elements of sherry. But this is, sometimes when they do that, you start picking up some of the oak and you assume this is fairly old. We don't know, but I, I, would, I would say on the average mid, mid 20s. Would it be my guess? Yeah, and things I'm not getting oak here at all. Like when I when they start doing bourbon and sherry, I always somehow pick up some oak tannins. So I'm not picking up any of that here. Well, here's the thing: I pick up oak on the Balvenie 30 year old. Yeah. I don't pick it up on the 25 year old single barrel. I mean, I I get a little oak on there when I smell it. it, it it's there. It's and it's it's a good thing. It's mm -hmm. oak's not a bad thing on whiskey. No, 
oak can be a bad thing, especially when you get into the 30 range. This yeah, is so just, you can be over oaked. Yeah. This I'm getting just no oak, and that's creating such a sweeter whiskey. It is very sweet. I would say, my initial guess, and as you can see, I've had this bottle for probably a year, and I've only drank this much out of it. Yeah. And that is a result of having over 100 bottles of whiskey in here. And I'm going out on the limit saying one you don't go to too often because you don't want it to go away. Agreed with that, too. It's similar with the 1409. Yeah. Similar with, with a lot of whiskeys. Because yeah. um, I know for me, when I have a whiskey that, it's okay, but it's not special. Mm -hmm. That's my go-to when I'm for my third drink of the night, you know? It's like, sure. oh, I've already had two good whiskeys. I don't want to, I don't want to waste anything. Well, you, as you know, I try to have a plan to when I start on a whiskey taste. Yes. I try to start with light whiskeys and move my kind of self up. And so this particular one is a little more sherry for, so I try mm -hmm. to save it to more the end of the night. Yeah. And it's the high ABV, 52 plus percent yes. ABV. Um, but it's not peated and it's not overly sherried. So no. it's not like I save it for the last drink of the night, but I try to have it in the middle of the night. This is nowhere close to a sherry bomb. I would venture to guess these are, if they're first fill sherry, there's just, as a percentage, this is a low percentage. Or they're, well, this is butts. So the sherry butts are the bigger barrels. Less contact. Yeah, yeah. Less contact. Less, less, less liquid contact with wood as it goes by. So it imparts lesser. Yeah. In so my opinion. Have you ever had like the raw, organic, whatever, you know, honey? Like where it's almost hard. Like it's not, you know, you can't pour it. You have to almost like spoon. I have not, but go okay. ahead. Okay. So that honey can be a little more bitter than your normal like right out of you know the the bottle honey and i get kind of the only bitterness i get here is almost like that kind of honey that non-pasteurized or whatever it is i forget the exact i'm not not something i consume often but it, it smells dark almost like old honey yeah if you will but like the only hint of bitterness is not oak it's not tannins it's to me it's, it reminds me of honey the but it's good. It's got to be that, like, the stuff that you have to, like... Scrape push. out. Yeah, yeah, scrape it out. It's There's not some that. density to it. You can't, yeah, use, you can't yeah. use a plastic spork to get that out of the out of the container, right? Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, it doesn't come out as a liquid. or It's... it's almost a solid. Yes. And that so, is... So, to me, I, I mean, I'm picking up that dark, rich honey note, very similar to what I pick up on um, the 1409 Batch 9 that I have. It's a darker, richer honey, but I almost feel like the sherry casts enhance it to some degree. Mm -hmm. They add that dark fruit. They add that. Yes, I almost feel like I almost feel like the malt is the same honeyed Balvini malt that I'm used to, but the sherry casts that are in this particular one are mm -hmm. perhaps the ones that are. I, I'm guessing the sherry casts that are in this particular batch five are refill casks, traditional yep. second, third fill cask, but they're 25 plus years old to kind of give it a density and a richness and a older feel to the honey. If yes, absolutely. Does that make any sense? Yeah, no, I, I'm completely getting it. Uh, I, mm. I agree completely. I, I, there's probably, you know, there might have been a first filler barrel or two in here, but... Few. <clears throat> yeah, but I mean, it was very... I mean, it would have been one. Yes. I, this has got... And it's... So we recently reviewed the Glenmorangie 30, which I... Somebody added in the comments that uh, one-third of it was first fill and the rest Glenn was... Glenn 30. Glenn Glenn, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and so it totally made sense once they said that. I'm like, yes. And that's why I'm getting a little bit sweeter and less darkness because all the roast is dark. Cask. Yes. Is yes. Use, so it's not a bad thing to use refill. Refill, again, gives it more of a sweeter element. There's a spot for it. Yeah. And the, the problem I get with refill sometimes is it's a little, you get oak tannins that are less desirable. Yeah, a little off. And I'm not getting that at all in the nose here. No, Balvenie does a beautiful job. Yes. Beautiful. There's never anything off putting to a Balvenie to me. Maybe maybe the twelve year old single barrel it was a little um, sour to me. The twelve single barrel is for a very specific whiskey drinker for sure. A little sour and a little bitter. Oh, yeah, I mean totally. it was a little bit different, but again, well, in the Car Caribbean rum cast, if you don't like that rum finish, then you're just not going to like that whiskey. But it was still well crafted. Yeah. Well, and opinion. again, I think it's because Belvini's well, got great malt. I would yeah. argue they might have within the, their region the best malt. Period. Best malt in the business. Highland and Space Side. You take those two regions together, I think they got the best malt in that region, in that group. I agree. And I'm I including agree. McAllen. Yeah, I agree. Oh, sorry, absolutely. McAllen. I agree. Well, again, if you, you, I've never had a McAllen without sherry at all. This isn't a McAllen review, but I haven't yeah. had just a bourbon only in McAllen. They've always been American sherry, a little bit yeah. of Russell sherry, double cast, triple cast, would used to be the fine oak. But in general, for my money, 
I have never really been disappointed with a Balvini, especially for the price point. Yeah, no, I agree. All right, first sip time. So I just actually sipped it a second ago. Um, I am getting more oak now. There is more tannins. There is more... Um, there's more bitterness here. Not in a bad way. Um, it's just, it actually kind of surprised me. It's a more complex whiskey on the palate than on the nose. Very much so. I've had one drink. This is the first person. You're the first person I've even shared batch five with. No. Oh. I've had one drink, one drink, one drink, one drink, one drink. About every month, I've had one drink for the last year or year and a half. Just to bring it down to this. And it is just, if you're a fan of the double wood, the, either the 12 or the 17 year old double wood, mm -hmm. you got to get your hands on this batch five. Because it does a lot of what the double wood does, but just in a full yeah. and completely encompassing <clears throat> and um, intermingled experience yeah. as compared to just uh, on the on the 12 year old double it's a superficial sherry finish on the 17 yeah. it's a little more it's a little more in depth yeah but the 17 that to me actually comes off more tannic and bitter but i, I think that's almost by design well it, i mean you, you compared to this correct correct so, yes 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 <clears throat> You know, I, I mean, obviously... So what I'm saying is, because I know there's a debate. There is a big debate out there among Belvedere lovers. 12 versus 17. What's the better bang for your buck? Well, the 12, because it's a $55, $60 bottle compared to a $130 bottle. But there's a lot of people out there who just don't like the 12 at all. I, that I've met. I don't but love have, the 17. I don't have a bottle of Belvedere double with 12-year-old. But as you know, I always keep a bottle of the 17-year-old. Yeah. To me, it's worth the extra money. To have a much, much better version of it. To me, it's like college football compared to pro football. Yeah. College football is a great sport, but it really only gives me 70 at most, maybe even close to 60% of the skill set yeah. that the NFL gives me. And a lot of people, they try more, they do this, whatever. I want the best version of whatever yeah. I can get. Now, the double one, there's no doubt, the 17-year-old is where it's at price point-wise. Because they have a 25-year-old at $600, and that is not worth the step up from the 17-year-old. Much like the McAllen 21 fine oak compared to the McAllen 30 fine oak. Well, but the 25 is just not comparable to the 17. They're just, it's different whiskey. It, it's different whiskey, but my point is it brings you 90% of what so, that whiskey offers. So what I'm getting ready to say here is, personally for me, I've always been a 12 guy. 17 was, to me, I'm a 17 just guy. too expensive for me. Sure. Yeah, we, I knew that. This... This is a sweet spot at four hundred dollars. Yeah. This is so much better. Yeah, about three fifty. But yeah, no, this is the best of the best version of what a double wood can be, in my opinion. Yes. And I'm glad that's kind of the the avenue I wanted to take this down was if you're a fan of the Balvini double wood series in any regard, you really owe it yourself to get your hand yeah. on this batch five. Now batch four, super oaky, not anything like the double wood. Batch three, more sherry, but a different experience in, entirely. This to me of the fifteen oh nines. Mm -hmm. is the most similar to the Balvini Double Wood of any of the releases that I yeah. personally had a chance to taste. Well, I'm going to go out in here and I'm going to say this is the best sherry bourbon blend I've ever had. It, it, it's right up there, man. I, it, I'm it trying is, to think of what else is out there. Now, I've not had a McAllen Double or Triple Cast 30 or something like that, which at this point the price is so high I don't even want to talk about it. Sure. But this is obtainable for most people. Sure. You know, it might be your once a year Christmas bottle. Yeah, it's, but a, it's a three fifty to four hundred dollar bottle most places. Yeah, I'm I'm seeing in the Kentucky area four hundred pretty consistently. But here's the beauty of it: unlike the double woods and the, the single barrels um, that we had talked about, the double woods are all forty three percent ABV. Mm -hmm. The single barrels are forty seven point eight. This is fifty two point yep. six percent ABV, and I think I mentioned this to you before, Dustin. Oh, you get Balvini over fifty percent ABV, you're in for a different Balvini. Yeah. It's almost like um, Glenn Farkas. As long as you get to 48 on these, even. I, I think 48 gets you to where you're at least. I, it makes I don't so know, much of a difference. I don't know any 48 Balvenie. Isn't the 15 uh, Sherry? 47, 47.8. Okay. So they're all 47.8. Okay. So it really, it's a single barrel series, then you jump to these tons, whether they're 1401 or 1509, and they go over 50. Now, for me personally, I almost feel it is that big of a difference in the distillery um, characteristic of bottlings, very similar to Glenn Farkless. I mm -hmm. feel like the Ton series from Balvini is very similar to the Glenn Farkless Family Cast series. Okay. To where it's just almost like a different distillery. 
I mean, the only special Glenn Farkless that I've had um, would be the 25 cast strength that you've provided, mm -hmm. you which yep. to me was, I mean, to say it's better than the regular is an understatement. Completely different whiskey. It's night and day better. Night and day. And then you gave me the 22 year. Um, 105. 105. And to me, that, I wasn't super impressed by that one. So. You know, this might be a review that I've talked about other whiskeys more <laughs> than, the whiskey. than the actual whiskey. So that back it to is. the whiskey here. Yeah, back to the batch so five. When we've drank the um, twenty five year, you come up and you start talking about heather honey. Yes. And you talk about that at Balvenie a lot. And now I've always gotten that flavor, and I always have been like, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. This is the first one when I've had it that my first thought when I was tasting it was heather honey, and it is so much of that heather and honey. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, there's sherry on here, but I've had whiskeys that had that kind of note without a lot of sherry. Mm -hmm. Like, this is just beautifully balanced whiskey. This is a sherry complement, not a sherry overcoat, not a sherry finish, not mm -hmm. a sherry whiskey. It's a sherried complement whiskey. Yeah. And so don't go in thinking sherry ball. That's, no. That's no, always the real, like, we've, no. we've talked about it, but yeah, we keep talking about sherry. Mm -hmm. This is not a sherry bomb. I have had whiskey that created this kind of an impact without using any wine casks. I think they've used the wine cast there just to enhance elements of this beautiful malt. Dave Stewart is a genius. If he was the one that had the, the, the master's hand in this particular one, which I believe he was, my goodness, this is just an excellent example of what a perfectly balanced about me could be. Now, for me, I personally like the Bash 4 better, so more oak forward. Yeah. That's personally what I like better. But I got to tell you, as far as an overall whiskey experience, I think most people would enjoy this batch five. Yeah. Or the batch three over batch one, two, four, and six. I've not had all of them, so I'm just saying this is great. <laughs> I've only had a sample of batch six, but but yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, I've at least sampled all of them, or at least the first six. And uh, this one, to me, as far as what Balvenie is and what it shows off, especially when you compare it to the double wood, this is the one. We're good as far as a whiskey score on this. I'm going. Uh... I'm going 91. I was debating 92, and I'm, I'm maybe 91 and a half. This is incredible. This is a this is one to run out and buy. At yes. Four hundred dollars. It is well worth it. There's only one honeyed malt in the Scotch single malt whiskey industry, in my opinion. That is the Balvini. That's how I would describe Balvini as a honeyed malt. And I'm at a 92 out of 100. I'm super impressed with this one, just yeah. like I am with all of the older Balvinis. Um, just an excellent, excellent whiskey. If you can find it, absolutely um, grab your, grab, uh, put your hands on it. And uh, thank you to Patrick uh, from Detroit for uh, hooking me up with a couple of these bottles, man. Thank you, bud. Uh, if you happen to be a fan of my channel or, or watching just on the regular, um, I wouldn't have had it without you, Patrick. So thank you, buddy. So I'm a 92. You're a 91 out of 100. 91 and a half. 91 and a half. 91 push, if you will, <laughs> out of 100. We want to thank you again for once again joining for another Whiskey Review. Until next time, Dustin, what do you wish the folks? Because of this one, drink happy. Happy drinking. <laughs>